it is one of John Cage's most extraordinary gifts to humanity is to reconnect us to silence. And that silence is in fact not the emptiness of sound, but in fact the fullness of sound, perceived and unperceived and acoustical and non-acoustical. It could be the sound in our brain. Um, and he discovered this in the mid-1940s. He was an, in an anocho anochoic chamber, and that is a chamber that is completely soundproofed. And I think it was at a studio in Harvard, um, in, in, in Boston. And he was inside this room, and, and he heard two sounds. He heard a, a, a high-pitched sound and a lower-pitched sound. And over the microphone, he said to the engineer, I hear two sounds. So it, obviously, it's not a soundproof um, chamber. And there was a bit of a, a moment of silence. And uh, the engineer said, Mr. Cage, you're hearing yourself. You're hearing your central nervous system and your heart and your blood as it flows through your body. So as long as we are living and as long as we are sentient beings, there is no silence as in the absence of vibration because sound is vibration, the universe is vibration. All matter, light, photons, everything from subatomic to galaxies is vibration and, and sound is at the core of that. In, in fact, some very exciting things are happening now in science. I, I, I would certainly make a reference to um, a book called The Jazz of Physics by Stefan Alexander, um, who is a string theorist, an astrophysicist, who is also a jazz player. And his premise is taking a lot of people, um, it's bringing a lot of people into a, a new vision of the universe as essentially sonic, its vibrations. Right? And that the very nature of the, univer the universe itself, the way it's built, has to do with overtones. So I was just demonstrating earlier, talking about overtones. But in fact, that may be the very concept of that as a part of the building box blocks of subatomic, the subatomic structure that allows matter to exist. Then uh, some kind of hierarchical structure that holds it, that holds it together. Then it's all vibration. It's all vibration. So vibration is not just sound, and it's not just what your ear hears. So as long as we are sentient beings with consciousness, we should have perception. And vibration is our perception, right? Everything is vibration. What we see, hear, taste, smell, all of our senses are through vibration. And our, uh, what we call music is a specialized kind of vibration that has special effects on us then. So is dance, movement. So that silence, in fact, is not the absence of sound. And um, I would give a demonstration. I'm going to make two sounds. And focus on the space between. So I'll do that again. And in the context of a musical language, I played it's something in C major, and I played a 5-7, G, B, D, F, and then I went to a tonic, 1, C major. Now, in the context of uh, this language, um, European language, there's an expectation of resolve, right? This, particularly the B in the soprano and the G in the bass, to move to here. So, in that silence, because I built it up, we anticipate something. Gotcha. So you were not anticipating that to happen. So I'm playing with your expectation, but in the silence. So silence is more of a medium, very subtle medium for things to happen, for information to be um, communicated. Okay. And um, listen to this silence. Can you still hear it? Sure you can. So, so even though the vibrations have dissipated, but the memory of it is still going. So it actually is not silent. Memory is a part of silence. Memory is a part of sound. Then. And that's internalized. It's our brain that is doing it.